wanted to take a look today at the Gibson Les Paul that I've kindly been able to spend some time with and uh, the PRS DGT which again this is one that I own but I don't necessarily play it all that often I'm not sure whether I love it as an instrument so the first thing to say is that I was attempting to play something in the ballpark on both instruments but actually they both do make you play quite differently I think I think part of that is to do with this string angle if you look at the two guitars side by side you'll see I think that the Les Paul string and neck break angle is way steeper than the PRS and I think that's probably one of the factors that makes them feel de very different to play the necks are not hugely dissimilar uh, the DGT is a little bit of a, a more of a C shape and this is I think a 60s sort of slimish you know a little bit less round feeling than the DGT. Now I think also it's important to say that these are the two companies that I hear quite a lot of negativity about so Gibson if you believe everything that you read online definitely have some QC issues or that's the perception that a lot of people have and PRS I think have some general appearance issues or aesthetic issues or PR issues anyway uh, a lot of people seem to be quite negative about PRS in general and say that they're overpriced for what they are, um, you know, a lot of bling. I think comparatively you can't really say that Gibson these days offer much better value for money, you know, a Les Paul standard now is expensive, a PRS DGT is expensive, they both make expensive sort of premium I'd suggest guitars, so I don't really see there being much of a value proposition either way unless it is the case that Gibson now don't make across the board in general or the majority of the time if they're making less quality guitars I don't know I don't play enough of these types of guitars to have any real data on that you can leave your comments if you've got any opinion on that so that's the thing it's the company that apparently have QC issues versus the company that apparently don't make guitars that have much of a vibe according to some people but the more important thing I think is that as an instrument, when you look at them, to me, this you sort of tap into the iconography of the Les Paul, the history of the guitar. The PRS doesn't quite do that for me, but I also feel very differently about playing this as an instrument. Um, it is making me play differently, and I think that's an important thing to consider, less than how it sounds and all that stuff, because these things can be made to sound similar, I, I imagine, by someone with skills. But if it makes you play measurably different or feel different or whatever the thing is, inspires you in some way, then that's kind of the justification for an instrument. So for me, I would pick this Les Paul over the DGT. I think it, in a lot of different cases, the DGT is, yes, more versatile, but I feel like this guitar in particular, you know, is doing a thing that is different enough to a Strat that I like that I could justify having this around in a way that as yet I've not really felt comfortable justifying the DGT, that's my opinion on that.
so this was the first time that I've had a Gibson Les Paul in the house and I've had a really really good experience with this guitar. It tends to be that Gibson are apparently the company that people like to say have massive um, quality control issues and then PRS obviously are one of the companies that people like to just you know say bad things about on a regular basis in a fanatical <laughs> kind of way which is kind of weird to me anyway so this I think this is a 2002 Les Paul standard I think premium plus because it doesn't have any um, mark where a scratch plate would have been so I think this is how the guitar came so I think it just means that it's got a slightly nicer top um, and then this is a, a fairly fancy looking PRS differences from the, the outset this I think has a maple neck which in theory makes a small difference the body is smaller on the PRS you know you know with PRS's you, generally you're getting a, a slightly smaller body hopefully slightly lighter weight although I think these feel remarkably similar um, and ergonomically maybe the PRS takes the uh, edge a little bit what I found and uh, hopefully you've watch the intro bit is that I actually want to play each guitar in a very different way so when I was going through trying to do some A B stuff I was kind of taking the vibe of the instrument but for instance you see with the Les Paul there's a few times where the same sort of rough part that I'm trying to play or the rough concept I end up playing with fingers um, so basically that's for me the biggest takeaway with these instruments is that you, you probably what you bring to them is as important as how they sound tonally because tonally I don't think they're entirely dissimilar so Take the neck pick up again. So my instinct is, and I've you know, not measured this, it seems like the Gibson Les Paul is giving out like a mellower tone. Or if you're a person who likes the PRS thing, you could put another spin on it. You could say the Les Paul is comparatively muddier or something like that. Or you could say the PRS seems thinner. That's sort of my instinct. It's not a massive difference though. Where there is a huge difference though is how it feels to actually play the thing. So the Les Paul got like this smallish feeling body on one hand but you've also got like this bit here where your arm is sitting and the angle of the strings it seems a bit higher the bridge than the PRS which sits quite flat the angle is different um, and I don't know to me if I had to choose between these guitars as they are I feel like I'm getting more out of the Les Paul as an instrument um, <laughs> Thank you. 
So yeah, that's the main difference for me. If you look at how the, the strings sit relative to the body, you've got an angle on the PRS which is kind of very straight. The Gibson is comparatively way further back. Um, you know, that neck break angle is definitely different on both instruments. So that, that's my feeling. So in terms of build quality and stuff, I don't can't really comment on what Gibsons are like in general. I've only got this one example to look from. Um, and this one, I'd say, is a quite a good example from 2002, as I say. But if I had to make the choice between these two instruments, which would I prefer to have if you offered to me that I could have either one of these guitars? To me, I'm pretty sure the Les Paul is what I would go for, if that's at all what you're interested in when you clicked on this video. Uh, that's my kind of take on it. I just feel like it's got more vibe as an instrument. Um, the PRS is, is fine, but I'm not feeling that same kind of connection to the iconography of whatever it is that the Les Paul means to me. Now that would be completely different to other people, but I also think like there is this uh, the sentiment certainly online in the comments on any video that I upload with the PRS is that people don't necessarily feel that same affection towards the PRS brand um, whether that matters to you or not I'm not sure but for sure I would say that it seems to me that the Les Paul is occupying more of the, the lower end of the spectrum you know it's sounding warmer it's sounding muddier uh, all of these kind of things um, now a pickup swap I'd imagine could get you closer but what wouldn't change is that it actually feels very different to play both instruments and obviously I can't quantify that in a video um, but you know how Les Paul is to play presumably um, the PRS is a different thing somewhere between like a Les Paul and a Strat I think this might be the more versatile instrument with the coil tapping um, also you know it's got a trem the pickup heights are, are relatively similar but again pickup types are, are probably somewhat different um, this to me feels like a, a sort of less resonant guitar, if that's a thing. Uh, this one seems to be a little bit more lively, the Les Paul, as well as having that warmer kind of tone to it. I mean, none of these things are particularly scientific or anything, but um, I was asked by Keith if I'd do a video um, talking about the difference between the PRS and the, the Les Paul. As I see it, um, the instrument that I would go to pick up more often I think would be the Les Paul. It seems to me that it's got a little bit more of a vibe to it. It's not to say that the PRS isn't cool, but I think this is cooler. Let me know in the comments if you're a PRS DGT guy or if you're a Gibson Les Paul guy. I'm going to imagine there's going to be more of you which are the Les Paul type. Also let me know if you really hate PRS. Why? Um, I think there's some cool things to like about the guitar. It's a little bit on the bling side, isn't it? Generally, that's the, the thing that I kind of see with PRS. It's like, that's a lot of flashy stuff on a guitar, particularly that sort of neck. Um, but yeah, a maple neck versus a mahogany neck, you'd imagine that could make quite a big difference. Um, it's probably, and the, the sheer amount of body mass here might make a difference, as well as that string break angle. That's certainly a factor when it comes to playability. Um, but I'm not actually finding that the Gibson is any less hard to play, it just, just makes you play differently and I think that is kind of the point with guitars really more than anything. Recent videos show us that you can make guitars sound relatively similar. The difference is that they play very differently, it's not necessarily like that they sound massively different but the things that you end up playing on them, hopefully if it's an instrument that inspires you, end up being a bit different to what you might play on something else or you know they at least enable you to do what you're seeking to do on them so that's my take on that let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts sorry it's not terribly scientific but i am a guitarist not a scientist unfortunately um but i do think this one's a very nice little les paul <laughs>
also let me know in the comments your experiences with Gibsons. You know, are the quality control issues as bad as what we see on the internet, or is that a little bit of a overblown internet myth? Um, I'd be interested to know your experience with kind of more modern Gibsons. Uh, equally, your experience with PRSs. I think there are potentially QC problems with any manufacturer who's churning out a significant amount of instruments. Um, but interested to know your thoughts on that and whether you had any preference on how they sound. They sound close enough that you'd just be picking based on playability or some other criteria. Cheers.